what do you mean by distributing a model and why would you do that? Haha. <laughs> well, you know, like I'm, you probably heard about those very, very large models, and especially in the field of computer vision and natural language processing. So we talk about those stable diffusion models that gen are capable of generating very, very uh, um, like uh, good images by just giving us input some descriptions and you have a very high resolution of those images or models like uh, chat GPT and so on that are basically uh, based on very large language models. So those models are really, really big. So for instance, we're talking about the GPT-3 model, it's 175 billion. parameter model, which is really, really big. If you do the math, this kind of model doesn't fit into the memory of one GPU. And this is why now we we needed to develop technologies, algorithms, and also hardware technologies in order to distribute efficiently the model into several, several machines, either in, within the same node or, or within different nodes at the same time. So, uh, Training those models today require this kind of distribution, and there are different types of distributing the model. So either, basically, there are two main techniques. So you take the neural network. So basically, a neural network is based on several layers. So the first thing that you can do is to split sequentially the model. So let's say, for example, layer one, two, three into GPU one, four, five, six, GPU two, and so on. And you do that. And this comes with a cost, you know, like you do your forward pass, your backward pass, and each time you need to communicate the activations, you know, from, you know, GPU to another GPU and so on. Uh, another technique is to split the tensors itself. So this is what we call tensor parallel, where for the layer itself, we can split actually the matrices into different GPUs. And this comes with like uh, uh, an extra cost in terms of communication between the GPUs. So this is why actually everything needs to be optimized. You know, the interconnect between the GPUs, the connection, you know, um, networking between the nodes needs to be optimized in order to actually um, optimize the communication during the training, but also the, during the inference in this case. But uh, yeah, but if we focus on the training, so there are different techniques that we can use for that. And even with that, you will see that during the training, we are calculating the feature maps, so the activations, um, and we need to store them in order to be able to compute the gradients at the backward pass. So, and this takes, you know, a lot of memory in this case, and there are different techniques in order to reduce this kind of uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the memory footprint during, during the training. by, you know, like saving, this is what we call activation checkpointing, for example, we save some of the checkpoints uh, rather than saving the entire activations. And we pay with that, you know, uh, a more like extra recompute of some of the, or some of the uh, activations uh, that we already recomputed. And this is how we gain some memory, for example, during the training. There are uh, plenty of techniques that will allow you, you know, to accelerate the training, to scale the model <laughs> according to your, to your infrastructure for that, yeah. And once you train that model again, you end up with a very large model. And in this case, it requires, of course, distributing that model because it doesn't fit into one GPU, even if you quantize it again. So it's still very, very large model. So usually we do the inference in a distributed mode uh, again. And if you are, uh, again, usually at the inference time, we are also, you know, dealing with the latency. So in this case, we need, you know, like to distribute efficiently the model in order to accelerate the inference.